few years ago, Peloton was a household name, synonymous with at-home fitness. It wasn't just another exercise brand, it was a cultural phenomenon. People everywhere were buying Peloton bikes and treadmills, tuning into virtual spin classes, and getting a gym-like experience without leaving their homes. At its peak, the company was valued at billions, generating hundreds of millions in revenue, but today the buzz around Peloton has faded significantly. Peloton bikes and treadmills flood Facebook Marketplace, and the brand is no longer the giant that it once was. So what happened? How did Peloton go from this explosive growth that threatened an entire industry to just another Bowflex? You can pretty much sum it up in one word, pandemic. Peloton's origin story began in 2012 with John Foley, the company's founder. He recognized the mental hurdle of spending more time going to and from the gym than actually spent working out. Frustrated by this inefficiency, he imagined a way to bring the immersive experience of a fitness class into people's homes. The idea was simple, create a high-end exercise bike that allowed people to join live classes from their homes via an iPad reminiscent screen, eliminating the need for a gym membership. He envisioned a content subscription-based workout structure. After facing investment rejection, he turned to crowdfunding in 2013. Peloton launched on Kickstarter, offering early buyers a chance to purchase the bike at a discounted rate of $1,500. The response was positive and word about Pel Peloton spread. And by 2014, the company had raised $10.5 million and began selling their bikes for $2,000 each, a price far above any other exercise bike on the market. And as demand slowly grew, Peloton began to attract more investors, eventually securing $550 million in venture capital by 2018. The company's valuation soared to $1.4 billion, and its bikes and virtual classes became staples in many homes. Then came the pandemic in 2020, and everything changed. With gyms closed and people confined to their homes, Peloton's demand skyrocketed and everyone wanted a Peloton bike or treadmill. And the company couldn't keep up with the sudden surge in orders and prices nearly doubled overnight. In a world where working out at home became the norm, Peloton became a status symbol and a perceived consumer necessity. The company's revenue soared, and it seemed as though nothing could stop Peloton's growth. But as quickly as Peloton rose, it started to fall. When the world began to reopen in 2021, people were eager to get out of their homes, return to gyms, and exercise outdoors. Demand for Peloton's products began to slip and decline. Worse, in March of 2021, a tragic accident involving a Peloton treadmill led to the death of a child. The news spread quickly, and the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission advised people to stop using Peloton treadmills due to the safety concerns, and Peloton eventually had to recall its products further damaging its reputation. And despite these setbacks, Peloton was slow to respond. The company believed it could weather the storm by lowering prices and focusing on its subscription services. However, by August of 2021, Peloton's market share had plummeted by 35%. Over the next six months, the stock price continued to fall and the company had to lay off 2,800 employees. In a surprising move, John Foley, the man who had founded and led the company, stepped down as CEO. Several factors contributed to Peloton's downfall. First, the company had overestimated how long the pandemic-driven demand would last. They invested heavily in speeding up their supply chain, even pouring $400 million into building a new factory in Ohio. But as demand dropped, these investments became liabilities. Getting a crazy windstorm here. As a side note, does anybody remember when Peloton faced backlash for a commercial in 2020 where a husband gives a wife a Peloton for Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty funny. 